On October 11th, 2011, hundreds of paddlers gathered in Kansas City to begin the 6th annual Missouri River 340, the longest continuous paddling race in the world. They were about to paddle 340 miles to St. Charles, Missouri, a small town just northwest of St. Louis. As the kayakers and canoers settled comfortably into their boats, one man began to stand out. That man was St. Louis resident Shane Perrin. Shane was about to become the first person to attempt the grueling race on a stand-up paddleboard. So Kelly, what do you think of Shane doing this? I think it's a little crazy. But <laughs> I think everybody's probably saying that. A little jittery right now, kind of a mixed emotions going, <coughs> going in. Uh, thinking about family, thinking about uh, kind of everything I'm going to need to get through this. So. I used to have a huge collection of hobbies and now it's basically been whittled down to stand up paddle boarding. Uh, kind of get up in the morning, that's what I think about. Uh, go to bed, that's what I go to bed thinking about. Uh, it's really, as a sport, it's just drawn me in and it's like, it. for me it's just unparalleled to anything I've done in my life. I just, being on the water is, I know it sounds corny, but it's kind of where I found myself, um, especially on this race. My, it's my journey to get to this point in stand up paddle boarding. Um, it's probably been about a three year in the making. I just was on the internet, came across the stand-up paddle boarding. I, I just, I thought it was just for surfing purposes and I then I kind of saw like, oh, they're doing this on the ocean, they're doing this, you know, in lakes and stuff. So I was like, man, in, in, in the Midwest, there's nothing, there was nothing available three years ago um, as far as stand-up paddle boards. So pretty much I had my canoe, I have a 14 foot old town that uh, I built this big, massive wooden paddle out of pine and cedar. Weight wise you're looking at like seven or eight pounds. Uh, the carbon paddles you're looking at just ounces so it uh, makes a huge difference actually. Shows I've come quite a long way in my paddling uh, gear so <laughs> basically I, I built that. I got in my canoe I started standing up in my canoe and paddling and the looks I got <laughs> you didn't know what to think and I just did that for you know first year or so. Um, only the second year and I got the idea, I'm like, you know what, if they're not available to buy, why don't I build a stand-up paddle board? So I built one uh, at a wood strip. Needless to say, my days of building boards are done. I really want to spread stand-up paddle boarding here in the Midwest. And I thought by doing this race um, and finishing and finishing well, uh, basically I can show that stand-up paddle boarding is a viable watercraft for racing uh, as well as recreationally here. But what we have is the advantage is we have these great rivers that um, are perfect for stand-up paddleboarding. So, um, showing on the big Missouri River, it, it just really showcased it out there to all these people. We are at Lexington. We're at the first checkpoint. How's it going, Shane? 50 miles down. Woo! I think I took it a little too easy in the beginning. I didn't jump out in the sprint. I kind of hung back a little bit too far. Okay. But uh, 
I'm averaging seven miles an hour even with that. So I'm right, actually, I plan on coming in at three and I'm here at three, so I'm on time. He's good, man. Get him, buddy, good job. Oh man, we are at Waverly. It just started to rain. We're looking at the radar now. A little shout out to my radar app on the Apple iPhone. Thank you, Steve. Jobs. Um, Shane should be here very soon. Haven't heard from him on the radio yet. Hopefully, he's not too wet and cold. He doesn't have any rain gear with him. Shane. I got rained on for about five minutes. Kind of pulled off to the side, got a little break. Um, other than that, we're 73 miles in, so we're looking good. I think we're gonna push uh, push through the night into the morning and try to get to Glasgow. So I'm thinking uh, in 24 hours, 142 miles is kind of the goal. Starbucks, ah, it's terrible. <laughs> Starbucks. Ah. Good job, man! Woo! As far as setting this goal, uh, this 340 mile race, uh, there's kind of a few underlying things that um, kind of made me want it so bad. Just uh, for one, like family life coming from, um, not saying I had a terrible family life, but we were just middle class, possibly even lower middle class, where didn't really have much, we didn't do much. Um, I don't, never really had a working relationship with my father, um, so for me it kind of, it was one of those things where I carry the, his name, the parent name, and it's just never a name that has, I don't know, amounted to anything or had like meaning to me. Um, to be able to put, the, make the parent name something and have some meaning in at least my life and to you know, hopefully affect others, it was a huge motivator for me, you know, to do this. Um, but not second to, but kind of in parallel was the. Uh, my whole kidney experience. This November 16th will mark the 10 year mark that I had a kidney transplant. So, uh, actually it was a fortunate incident in my life. I really wasn't living life like I should, kind of living in the fast lane. And, and I came to a point where, not because of the way I, my lifestyle, but just I had kidney failure. I was on dialysis for a year. And then I got a transplant. I got a kidney from my mom. So part of what pushes me out here, what drives me, is that pretty much I got a second chance at life. So making the mo most of every day I can. Once you almost die, or you should have died, it really changes your perspective in life. Um, you value things a lot differently. Um, your goals change. Um, and for me, like you know, like I said, coming up on this 10-year anniversary of a kidney transplant, I wanted to kind of make it something big and, and basically kind of giving back to my mom saying, hey, thank you, uh, you know, making this making this part of like, it's not just me out there, like I'm, I'm powered by a 60-year-old woman's kidney. So, I mean, it, for me, it's, it's really a cool experience that not many people know about. What'd you get him? Four double cheeseburgers and a large fry. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, after McDonald's, where are we headed, Dwayne? Uh, we're going to Miami. Woohoo! All the way to Miami? Miami, Missouri, baby. So yeah, I definitely got to change some clothes here. <laughs> Came up and I just went right off the side. Now, are you holding that thing and talking, or are you just... No, I was like this, and I was holding the paddle. <laughs> and then so the thing came up and I just went right off and I'm like, so I'm soaked right now. This is ridiculously good. <laughs> yeah, this is like, oh. Mmm. That's so tasty. Are these your workout gloves? No. This when you pump you up. Music man, I had this classic rock station on the past five hours and I was just cranking with it, man. It was awesome. Hold it out on me, man. <laughs> Give me this cheeseburger. I got we got more cheeseburgers. We got four. I figured you should take one with you. Oh yeah. Starbucks. Have you been drinking that. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that was a Starbucks. And actually, when, okay, I, I take back what I said earlier. Not that terrible. <laughs> Man, that thing did the trick. It was like, I drank that, and I think that's what got me motoring. <laughs> you want another one to take with you? Double cheeseburgers, fries, cookie, and Starbucks.
I just spent the last four hours basically peeing out my butt off the side of a board. Starbucks. Uh, I almost liked it for a second there. And it comes full circle. It comes full circle. <laughs> uh, the bikini briefs. This is uh, at the end of the laundry list. <laughs> this is what we break out when there's no more laundry. These things are great. What are you talking about? How was that shower? Ugh, I cannot put a price tag on how good that felt. The best shower I've ever had. It's quite amazing. How are we feeling this morning, Shane? Oh, a little rough. Uh, two hours of sleep last night were pretty minimal. I had people talking all around me and laughing and shutting doors and opening doors. I didn't sleep too, too much, but I feel a lot better than last night. That's for sure. Now, my fingertips are been rubbing on those things for the last 142 miles, so they just as raw as can be. Just like touching them is kind of a little painful. So, I don't know, I guess it wasn't a good choice to use closed uh, gloves. I was missing this thing badly last night. It's a little different game when you don't have any music. Get stuff away from me. This, this is the last one, you sure you don't want it? Yeah, keep that away. <laughs> Never again. Fellas, thank, thank you. See you soon. See you soon. Uh, we're gonna feed him Cliff Bars and pasta salad for the next 200 miles. <laughs> I was having some stomach issues through the race. I couldn't eat a lot of food. I basically, I lived off the pasta salad um, that my wife made and then uh, these granola bars and uh, cliff bars and, and things like that. Um, it, that was a tough part was really, I, I was not taking nearly in enough food um, as to what my body needed, but somehow it worked out. It's hitting now, like this is when it's getting tough. Like earlier it was like I was all smiles, now I'm like... Uh, You're I'm still pushing. smiling, look at you. Yeah, I'm pushing though, man. It's, it's, it, that was a push, it was just, it, I, like I was paddling harder than like the last leg, but I was going less distance because it was just the wind was on me, no matter what I did. Driving Shane to the bathroom right now. Good thing he's not out there in this. Dude, I'm so glad. I've been sweating it all freaking day, man. I just beat this by about 20 minutes. I had no rain gear out there either. I know. That, I know. Was, that would've been bad. I knew you didn't have your uh, your paddle jacket or anything. And my legs aren't even really sore. It's kind of weird. Must be the stretchy pants. Got about three hours of rest, much needed. Um, kind of waiting out the storm, so. We're gonna get out there and uh, try to finish this thing up. All right, so here I am. Uh, Thursday morning about 3 a.m. Uh, I'm about 220 miles or so into the race. Definitely starting to feel the effects of the of sleep deprivation. Um, I have trouble keeping my eyes open, so I've kind of been doing a paddle for 55 minutes and then and kind of just kneel or sit for five minutes. Um, it's not that my body's my body's not giving out. It's just that I, I can't keep my eyes open right now. I'm having a hard time. Probably about two and a half hours to Jeff City. Uh, this is kind of where the race kind of really starts. <laughs> it's starting to get hard. Overall, just the mental uh, kind of wear down of myself. I just, you get to the point, you're halfway through the race, three quarters of it, you're, you're just not thinking properly. You're, you just have that mental loss. And I wasn't even thinking about eating food. I wasn't thinking about drinking. Um, I mean, I was just lucky. I had Dwayne constantly on me. He's like, man, you've got to eat, you got to drink. So it was just a constant battle to, to fuel myself as well. Uh, Kind of something I have been kind of holding from my ground crew is, man, I'm in some I'm in bad shape right now. My back, this pinch thing I got going on, just feels like every time 
every time I put a paddle in, it's like someone just jabbing me with a knife, and it's just taking its toll on me. Um, my left knee is just kind of beat up. Um, I don't know what happened with that. Uh, basically, it's just uh, the gut check time, and kind of kind of do what I got to do to get it get down there. How are we feeling in uh, the, the state's capital, Jeff City? Uh, a little chilly. Uh, last night I paddled. Actually, the checkpoint is uh, right before the capital. Uh, and I paddled seven miles past the checkpoint. It's it's funny what uh, is, is becomes a highlight to you uh, after you're racing and wearing the same clothes and your body's beat down. Um, it's like simple things of you know coming in and having a warm cup of coffee. I actually missed the checkpoint uh, in the middle of the night. I think it was like four in the morning, uh, five in the morning, and I, I paddled seven miles past the checkpoint. Um, the boat had to come get me and bring me back. From that traveling in, you know, it was cold just because the wind's hitting me on this boat. Um, so like the simple things like warm coffee, and I was like, it's it's like a luxury. And uh, biscuits and gravy, I mean, it was like, that was the, I'd never eat biscuits and gravy, but I'm now a convert because it was so good. <laughs> like I need to have that again. Yeah, so the the race official just came by and told us that Shane does not have to paddle the seven miles that he's already paddled. So uh, we're pretty psyched about that. We're gonna take him back up to where we where we picked him up, and he can start back from there. So very good news. Very good news. Yeah. <laughs> very good news. <laughs> Instead of doing the 347, I'm back to doing the 340 again. <laughs> oh. This is new paddling attire. Uh, yeah. This is the Shane Perrin SUP line of paddle products. You know you're losing your mind when you put two shirts on, but you only put your hands in one sleeve of one of the shirts. That's hilarious. <laughs> I can't win. Pretty much getting checkpoint to checkpoint. Uh, I really looked forward to seeing my ground crew, um, seeing Dwayne, just because, uh, man, the guy was on it. Like, no matter what I needed, he, he's like taking, taking my you know, camel back off me. He's filling it up. He's getting food. He's doing this, and just just to see the guys, and you know, to see Duncan, um, you know, the, the film crew out there. It was just that mental boost that I needed. Dwayne, just a phenomenal guy. I I've only been friends with him probably about three, four months now, um, but he's just he's the guy that gets things done. Um, he was my behind the scenes guy for everything. Um, the stuff that I brought in a tub, I brought this stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is good. And then Dwayne, I show up. And in the van, he loads three times the amount of stuff that I had, and I'm like, man, you're bringing a lot of stuff. He's like, this is for you. So I mean, he he just like I said, he thought of everything. Like a lot of the gear that I was using was his gear. It, like I said, without him, I would have been freezing. I would have been hungry. I would have been dehydrated. I would have probably been curled up on the side of the river. <laughs> Don't think it's just me doing this 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 Missouri 340 race. I mean, there was a lot of other people that helped me out to get to this point. Um, but really, through the race, the reason why I got through was Dwayne. The guy really took care of me out there. Made it, he really made it happen. That really makes the difference, man. The ground crew makes it really. Serious, it does. Yeah. If, if like you, for me, like well, for what I'm doing, I'm staying at paddleboard. Like I can't carry on carrying stuff. Right. Yeah, you need all the help you can get. You guys have been great. You know? They've been doing all right. Yeah, I'm gonna give a little, little, little help. <laughs> really, the volunteers that were at these checkpoints. Um, Everyone was just super supportive. They were like, man, I can't believe you're doing this. This is so awesome. Um, and those, those, those mental boosts, that, I mean, I said, that, that's what got me the next you know, 42 miles to the next checkpoint. You are doing great. Oh. That's quite the job there, buddy. That's a hey. lot of paddling standing you. up. Thank you, man. That's a, you proud of yourself on that one. When I got into Washington, which it wasn't a checkpoint, but um, I talked to Dwayne on the VHF radio. I was hey man, he's like, you know, stop in Washington. I'm like, eh, I don't really need to. He's like, no, no, he's like, stop in Washington. I said, so I was like, oh, okay, whatever. So I go over, it was good to see him. Um, and he's like, hey, well, give, let me get some of your gear. And he was taking gear off, which just was the normal thing. And, and next thing I know, I look over and I was like, hey, is that, is that my wife and my son? Here it is, like, you know, 8.30 at night. And you know, I got, you know, basically three, four hours left to finish the race. And all I didn't want to do was go. And I'm like, I need to go on land, man. This is, you know, it was just like one of those awesome moments when I'm just like, you know, very emotional. You, know, you just get caught up. You see your family for the first time in almost three days and hug your kid. So it's, uh, it was really cool. I mean, even now I'm kind of, it just, it, it was just such a good feeling to see them and I hug them. And, you know, it was 
probably the best highlight of the race. It's late for you to be out here, creeps. Hi. I said I've said Dada seven thousand times. Baba Roo. Dada. Get off. What's my creeper doing? You want to go on the board? No. Huh? I say no, Dada. It's too cold. Board. Thinking about you. It's a train. It's a train. <laughs> train. <laughs> oh, Dad. Oh. Oh, Dad. How are we doing? 20 to go. Yeah. We're almost there. Whew. Getting a little rough. Dude, how cool is it that it's getting a little rough with just like. Yeah, with 20 miles left. It's getting a little rough. Alright, fellas. Over 300 in. 20 left. Good job, brother. 150 out. I uh, could use some sleep. Um, I've slept about. Uh, I think if I've gotten three hours through the whole thing, it, that's pretty good. Less than uh, Shane. Yeah, less than Shane, which he's been working a lot harder, so he needs to have more sleep than me. Mm. That was rough. That was a rough drive. Barely make it. Yeah. Hanging on. I'm pretty beat. Hey, this is it. This is St. Charles. Yes it is. Yes it is. People have been Everyone's asking, been asking. Like far and wide about this guy. Like where, oh where is he? Yeah. Is he oh, what is he doing? How about a meet bet you out there? The difference between an ordeal and adventure is attitude. <laughs> That's my meat bat. Shane Perrin, you are a beast. First stand up paddleboarder to complete the MR340. Woo! Yeah, buddy. Right up here. Gear this sucker up. Congratulations, Shane. Uh, thank you, thank you, man. Job well done. Never done anything like that in life. There you go, girl. Awesome job, ground crew. Hell yeah, man. You could have done that without you. Couldn't have done that without you. Thanks. Congratulations. And the rest are all just blistered. The one there. So yeah, pretty much every finger. Except for this pinky, man. I made it out alive. Man, skating. Not, not too bad. Finishing first and last, <laughs> but doing it with incredible style and a lot of courage out there, Shane Perrin, 66. I don't know how many times I got asked, what about the stand-up guy? Is he still in the race? I'm sure he is. How many of you have a sore butt from racing? <laughs> Not him. <laughs> Everything else, I'm sure. Every time I paddle long distance, I'm in my boat thinking, gosh, I wish I could stand up. Or, gosh, I wish I could stretch. So I'm a little jealous of the fact that he can stand up, he can sit down, he can lay down. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I think it's uh, it's got some potential, and I think Shane's a great ambassador for it because, uh, you know, he's a real athlete. I mean, this isn't... Uh, this isn't just some guy uh, goofing off floating down the river on a, on a board. I mean, Shane is out there pounding over and over again. I mean, he's, he's an animal out there. People have a lot of respect for that in the paddling community. So I think Shane's the right guy for the right time to, uh, to bring stand-up paddleboarding uh, into the mainstream.